How many talented students postpone their mission abroad just because they are either not confident enough or still believe in myths about foreign education? Language difficulties, difficulties with adaptation, getting used to a new system of education as well as high cost of living abroad or just hard times – all these things move future students further away from their goals. In this video, we'll consider these common fears and try to do our best to make them less powerful and make students more confident. Ignorance of a language is the most common problem, which forces many young boys and girls to give up the idea of education abroad, being sure that they will not be able to achieve the language level necessary for living and studying abroad. Of course, there is no doubt their knowledge of a language is necessary to live and study abroad, but still, poor knowledge is not a disaster. Firstly, if you are considering starting in a country where English is not an official language, it doesn't mean that you will have to learn the language of the chosen country. Many educational institutions have programs in English, so sometimes you don't even need to learn other languages. But secondly, if you're considering studying in the native language of a chosen country but are afraid that your knowledge of it is not yet sufficient, you may be provided with the opportunity to visit free language courses at university. Thirdly, you've probably learned English for some time before, either at school courses or with a tutor, so it cannot be said that you're a complete ignoramus if you choose a program in English and check out the required level of proficiency, you'll be able to prepare in advance to improve your knowledge to a necessary minimum, and then improve your language skills as you learn. Many people who became famous in the US had once a really poor knowledge of English. Antonio Banderas kept silent about his ignorance of the language in order to break into Hollywood. The English-speaking agent of Banderas negotiated with an American director about the actor's audition. During the audition, as Antonio would later joke, he answered all questions with one single word, yes. Nevertheless, the Spanish magic got the role and two weeks later Antonio flew to the shootings of the Mamba Kings movie in New York. He learned the text by heart using a transcription. Arnold Schwarzenegger did not immediately speak English either. Moreover, his accent was so strong that he had to take additional classes with a tutor helping him with pronunciation. Adaptation. Anyone who's ever moved to another country, even just for a few years of studying, says almost the same thing. I I knew that relocation is hard, but I couldn't imagine that it would be that hard. Even people craving for the experience of living abroad faced adaptation-related psychological problems, not to mention those having doubts in the first place. Again, I'm not going to lie, adaptation is really not an easy process. There is even such a thing as Ulysses syndrome when an immigrant faces a whole range of problems caused by the situation. Homesickness, loneliness, disappointment with the new country. We know lots of people who achieved success in life in exile. For example, many Russians, Sergey Brin, co-founder of Google, supermodel Irina Shaikh, Mikhail Baryshnikov, belly dancer and choreographer. Doesn't mean that you can only achieve success outside of your homeland, but overseas experience will definitely help you in setting and implementing your goals. There are people who lived and studied abroad, but then moved back to share their knowledge with others. Mikhail Lomonosov spent three years in Marburg and a year in Freiburg, where he obtained knowledge in math, physics and chemistry. Natural scientist Vernonsky was sent to many different countries – Italy, France, Germany – to continue his education. After coming back from Europe, he started to teach in Imperial State University, known today as MSU. Remember, you're not the only one facing these kinds of problems, and don't forget that many successful people faced them as well. Living and studying abroad is expensive. Well, it's very likely that your expenses will indeed increase for some time. You'll have to pay for accommodation, tuition, textbooks and documents. Not everyone is ready to be financially independent in another country, but firstly, life abroad is not always more expensive than life in your country, and secondly, you don't have to carry the whole thing yourself. If you do everything right, you'll be able to get a scholarship. As for expensiveness, not every European country requires a lot of money to live in. For example, higher education in Italy as well as in many other European Union countries is free, including for foreigners. The main condition is that you study at a state university in Italian. By the way, rental prices are not so high in many cities. In Czech Republic, you can settle in a Charles University dormitory for just 80 euros per month. However, you'll have to share a space with four other students. But even for those who want to live alone, the prices are not exorbitant – about 30 euro per month. 
Of course, one can say that it's several times more expensive than a room in a Russian dormitory, but dormitories in Europe are completely different from Russian ones. By the way, food in Czech student canteens is not at all expensive either. On average, a student in the Czech Republic spends 150 euro per month. They eat mainly in student canteens, where you can take a complex meal for 5 euro. Italy helps foreign students not only financially, but also with provision. If you are a scholarship holder in Italy, you can have lunch in the canteen for only 1 euro. Also, some universities grant special coupons that can be exchanged for meals in cafeteria. But let's talk about scholarships later. Considering the cost of food and housing, plus transport and entertainment, we can see that the average student in the Czech Republic spends about 600 euro in total. And we didn't even touch scholarships yet. If you'll be lucky to have it, you can cover expenses for housing and partially for food. Some countries provide students with a place in a student residence or cover the most of renting a room by an extra allowance of 2,000 euros or more. And you don't have to be genius for a scholarship. There are different types of it in Europe and America. In European countries, students usually receive funds based on their family's financial situation. In America, there are also scholarships for sportsmen. If you are considering an option of studying abroad but are afraid that you might not be able to submit an application for a scholarship or at university in general, then you can always appeal to our employees from SMAPS Education, who will help you to choose the program and prepare documents. Visit SMAPS.com and ask questions to online counselors. Also, don't forget that we have a series about traveling on this channel. Just check it out. There you will learn more about countries and cities where you can come for studying. Before we move on, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel to see more interesting and useful videos, of course, if you haven't already. The next problem preventing students from studying abroad is the fear of not being able to handle the load. Another language, unaccustomed educational system, different requirements, all this forces potential students to boost, pawn, or even abandon their intention to study abroad. Let us all agree that studying abroad is always more difficult than at home, at least because of the language barrier that can be a problem even to those who are fluent in the given language, but another educational system should become not your enemy but your friend. And this is possible since many European and American universities give students the right to make their own study schedule, thanks to which they have the opportunity to regulate their study load. Moreover, foreign universities don't have a bunch of unnecessary subjects so that students can concentrate on one or two subjects in which they take exams at the session. For the first semester, you can only choose one subject and you'll pay 100% of your attention to it, so passing it will not be a problem. After that, you'll be gradually adding subjects to the first one. There may be a possibility that education will take a little longer due to this system, but I don't see anything bad in this. You're not expelled for academic debt, so you also have the opportunity to close them later. Or perhaps this way you might graduate later than you initially planned, but on the other hand, you'll get a really good base which in combination with practices and internships, while they're represented at foreign universities, you will make an excellent resume, opening up lots of opportunities. If talking about the UK, there is such a thing as a gap year, allowing you to take a year off after completing a sum of four year. During this period, you can work, travel to different countries, learn languages, and then come back to the university with renewed strength and possibly with new knowledges. And of course, set yourself up to the lost part of studying. Let's call the next problem. It's not a good time. People used to put off their plans to study abroad because they thought they weren't ready morally, financially, had poor knowledge of language, and so on. Then the pandemic began and the mission was again postponed indefinitely. Over the last decades, we have have always faced some obstacles and problems, but there is still quite a large percentage of people moving to study abroad despite everything. Now it's 2022, the restrictions are not that strict, and what stops you? Universities that accept international students provide them with the support from the beginning of study. For example, the University of Turin allocated 20 additional scholarships for students from Russia. For some of them, even tuition fees have been deferred.